Actually, here today, the scripture is uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. As you are opening, it's also in the screen. The prayer, Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise, glory, and honor. This is a holy moment to speak your word to your people in the name of Jesus. I pray for the empowerment that comes by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I pray you give me utterances beyond even the preparation to make known the mystery of the gospel. I pray that the heart of your people be is good ground. Let the word end and germinate. May you back up your word and glorify yourself. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for your testimony. And preservation. God does signs and wonders. You may not know how, but you have just seen it. There, how far we leave it to God? How will the school fees pay? I don't know, but they are paid. How we do the How far is left for God? Verse 28 says, Hebrews uh, 12, verse 28, and said, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, since we are receiving the kingdom of God, which is immovable, is a kingdom that cannot be shaken, that cannot be overthrown, is a kingdom that will remain and abide forever. So he's saying now, therefore, meaning is concluding as an appeal now to the people. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we must serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Since we are receiving a kingdom of God, the kingdom that will remain and abide forever, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably, number one. Number two, with reverence. Number three, with a godly fear. Why? Verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. I'm talking and I've entitled this uh, teachings Your Service to God. Your Service to God. Uh, it's a beautiful scripture that I summarize it, but before we come back to it, uh, most people in the natural, and maybe you also you have had those experiences, you have gone to a restaurant the way they have saved you. Sometimes you are not able to say, the person that these people save this sucks, and you leave. Or you call a service provider and say, oh, their service is not up to scratch. Why? You are not happy of how they have served you because it was below the expectation. Are we together? Amen. Have you heard those? So now the scripture here is said, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, the kingdom of God, that he has come by Jesus Christ, since we have received, by accepting, we are now moved into the kingdom of God. Now, in this kingdom that we are in, now, that let us hold on to the grace so that we may be able to serve God in a manner that is acceptable, in a manner that shows reverence, and in a manner that shows godly fear to God. Are we together? And the key word there being served, that word served there when you study from the Greek word, it means to pay homage or to minister or to, to render a religious activity in a way of serving. Are we together? For a priest in how you discharge your priestly office or a pastor in another way, how I discharge my priestly office, that's that word there, how I am serving God. Are we together? Or oh, for you, in whichever way, capacity that you do, we are serving God here in the house. How do you serve God? That's the word. That service is to render a religious activity to God, to pay homage to God, to minister to people's need on behalf of God. How are you doing it? Are we doing it? So he said that word there, it means to serve. Now, the service to God. From the biblical perspective that he has brought, it means that service must have three things. Every time I say, I am serving God, I am ushering people, or I am praising to usher people in the presence of God, those three things must be there. Because the service is not to the people, it's to God. The people are the beneficiary. So when I am preaching here, I am preaching to you, but I am serving God. Amen. Are you understanding? 
When I am singing, I am singing to usher people in the presence of God. The people are benefiting. I am serving God. Though the ear, you will feel as if I am leading you into praise and worship. Are we together? Oh, I am pretty. Oh, whatever I am doing in the house of God, I am serving God through the people. Are we together? Amen. But within me, I must know what I am doing is a service to God. Now the Bible says, therefore, since we are receiving this kingdom of God that we are part of it, let us have grace by which we may do what? We may minister. We may do our sacred services. We may share. We may attend to one another as a service to God. And that one must have three characteristics. Number one, it must be acceptable. Number two, it must have reverence. Number three, it must have godly fear. When it's like that, that what pleases God. Are we together? So let us look at it. It says acceptably. The word acceptably there. Let's look at those three ways. Acceptably, when you look at it from the Greek version of, the, of that, the meaning of that word, it means in a manner pleasing to him. In a manner pleasing to God. When I am serving, it must be in a manner that pleases God. Are we together? When I am serving you, when you come, Pastor, and you have got an issue, maybe you are coming for counseling. You are benefiting the counseling, but it's a service to God. Now, when I am doing it, it must be in a manner that pleases God. It must be acceptable to God. It might be the one that pleases God. Are we together? It must be the one that pleases God. Now, I'll give you an example. Maybe in the Old Testament, you will see. For instance, the high priest on the day of atonement, when he's going to the Holy of Holy to present his blood, the blood on his behalf for his sin and on behalf of the people. You will see those olden days, people, the biblical uh, historian has said, when the high priest goes into the Holy of Holy, that once a year, they will put a robe on his ankle and on that robe they put bears. And he goes beyond the veil into the holy of holy at the mercy seat to put the blood to plead for forgiveness for his sin and the sin of his people. Now, at that place, God, God says to Moses, He will come and meet with the high priest in there. Now, the bear outside, when he is performing those rituals in the holy of holy, the bears are making noise because of the movement he's making. And the reason of that was that so that because when God is not pleased, he's going to strike him dead. And because he's dead, nobody is allowed to enter the Holy of Holy except the high priest. How you pull him out? Then the rope, they pull the body outside. Because God has killed him. He has not accepted what was brought in terms of doing the ritual in the Holy of Holy. That what was happening in the Old Testament. Are we together? Now, those things, Jesus by dying and says, no more temple. They, 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 they fell in the temple that was separating the holy of holy, the holy place, and the outer court. That fell is no longer there because those were representation of the reality that is to come through Jesus Christ. As the veil was torn, when Jesus died on the cross of that one, that veil was torn from top to bottom. To say the access is given to everyone. But when we read there, what is our lesson? It means my service to God cannot be just anyhow. Is it acceptable to God? Can God be pleased with the service I am doing? Are we together? And I'm just using an example to demonstrate. I can be, for instance, an ash when I am welcoming you to church. You are benefiting my life. You are benefiting how I have welcomed you. But within my heart, it is a service to God. Amen. And that service must please God. Because I am raising that service to God. Mm. Are we together? Amen. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Another version says, let us hold on to the grace. So that we are able to serve God in a manner that pleases God. In a manner that God find it acceptable to him. My heart is involved. My intentions are pure. I am saying this is a service to you. Though my neighbor is the beneficiary of what I am doing. 
are we together? Amen. That's why even in the Old Testament, especially before the time of the tower, when they offer sacrifice, you will see fire coming down from heaven and consume the sacrifice. Why? It shows that God has, has accepted the sacrifice that was raised. And when we are worshiping here, it, when there is a presence of God, it means God is accepting the praise and the worship coming from Him. As it is, the presence of God is responding. How are we together? This year, this decade, the gift that you have, when we are serving God, the service must be pleasing to Him in a manner that is pleasing to Him. In the same way, when they give you a lower service in a restaurant, you can walk away. So it is with God. When the service is just anyhow, and it is done as a spiritual activity, but God has not responded to it because it was not pleasing to him. Are we together? So the service to God must be pleasing to him. Number two, the service must do what? With reverence. Reverence. Reverence, one of the definitions I pick up, is an attitude of deepest respect. For God. Remember, I say we are serving God, so the reverence is to God. When I am raising my service, it must be with an attitude of deepest respect to God. How it will? It might show that I am in awe of God as I am raising this service to Him. Though the individual can benefit from it, but the service is to God. How it will? There is a psalm, I don't have it on the screen, Psalm 89 or 7. If you can open your Bible quick, Psalm 89 or 7. It says, God, Psalm 89 or 7. Hallelujah. Amen. I read Psalm 89 or 7. Amen. It says, for uh, uh, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. We'll explain the fear now. But and to be held in reverence by all those around him. Now the application for us when we are gathering in a corporate worship, Psalm 89, verse 7, the reverence, the attitude that God is being respected. God is being valued, must be demonstrated. And that thing is from your heart. Remember, God does not see as men see. God, uh, men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. It is the heart having the value that this service is to you, oh God. Receive this service. Though I am actually, or though I am singing, Although I am, I am ministering or I am praying for someone, it, there is a selfish God having the respect out of it. Because remember, who is the recipient of the service is God. We are doing the service to God, though the beneficiary can be the people. Because we serve God by serving these people. How are we doing it? The people are the beneficiary, but the reverence in the service is to God. How are we doing it? Now, there is one preacher who asks his congregation, if what you are doing in church, and you are called to the president's house, to the state house, to, to union building, to go and meet with the president, will you do the things you are doing in church? The church went quiet, and you also went quiet. <laughs> Why? He's saying, if in church what you are doing, you can't do it to the president then it means what you are doing is not the reverence to God. Then it's become a spiritual activity. It is God value by what you are doing. When you have the value for God in your heart, there is no way you will do things anyhow. There must be a reference to God so that God is touched by that. As you will see later, God responds because the moment the service with his reverence, it attracts divine attention to the person. Amen. How are we together? Amen. That's why when you go in for an interview or you go in, they say you're going to meet the president at 11. There is no way you will get to the meeting at half past 11. Why? Because according to the protocol, then, you have no respect for the president. That's why you are coming after. The meeting. But when it's for God, why? Why are we doing it for God? 
our expectation is God will understand. But let me tell you, God looks at these small things and sees the reference for me so that I can be drawn to you. Are we together? Reference for God. Can God be, be shown the respect from your heart? Remember, God sees it from the heart. How you value it. Outside it can be shown, but the moment is the heart matter being presented to God as a way of showing the respect for it. Then God responds to that service. Amen. Are we together? God respond. And the other, the other time I gave you an example when we traveled in September to Dubai. One friend in our wife was buying one of the phone in the shop. And we bought in the shop maybe 22 to 11. We are busy looking at the phones. You know, from the lady's perspective, you look at one, you look at the other one, you're taking time. When it was 5 2, they said, Mother, there the service is nice. The service in the shop is nice. But they came to me and said, Mother, if you have not made that woman, yes, we are closing the shop in five minutes. It is our time to go for prayer. Please come back at two o'clock to come and buy the phone. It means, and they, the door were closed. We're the last customer in that shop. The doors are closed because 11 o'clock, they must be on the carpet crying out to their God because it's time and they don't mind if you will bring a million rand by that time all they care is the time they have to show reference to their God because they have the conviction within them when you talk to say all these nice things are happening to us is because of this God mm. so there is no way I will stay here for you to buy the phone I have to go come back at 2 o'clock but in that five minutes, we end up buying the phone. And when we left, they go. We already closed. When we left, then they lock now. They go. They say, we'll come back at 2 o'clock. They don't mind if you don't buy. But it's a time to go and show reference to their God. Are we together? Yeah. But in Christian life, what do we do? Even if you're on the way to church, your business partner call you. You're not going to go to church. You will turn. You will go and attend the meeting because it's time to make money. God will understand. The breakthrough has come. No. One of the ways of God testing you is to allow also some of these things and see where is the value. Is it to the business or is it to God? The moment he realizes the value is placed on him, then these are the doors they start opening up. Are we together? He is a reference for God in what you are doing. God, the scripture with it, the last part, be held in reference by all those around you. Hallelujah. Is God regarded in all through the service you are doing? Are we together? And this, when it came here in the whole house, it was even a sound check for ourselves because when the message came, it's not for the congregation. It starts with the one who will deliver it. Mm -hmm. God start dealing with it. When I am, you are doing counseling to someone, it is a reference to God to say this matter must be held. And this is my service to you, God. Are we today? When I am leading prayer, I am not just doing it so that it's time to pass. Then I am this preparation in the background to understand what is the type of prayer we must pray, what we need to do. So that the service is not a religious activity. Because you don't waste people's time to come here at 9 and leave at half past 11. You rather go somewhere else. But when you have to come and receive from God, then there is preparation in reference. Lord, what are we saying to your people? What are we saying to your people? And it starts with us. So when the message comes, it's not for you, it's for all of us, including the person delivered. But it hit me twice. Because when in the closet, is child dealing with me. When I come and deliver you, he's hitting again with me. He's dealing with me. Though he's dealing with you once. That's dealt with me two times. Are we together? Amen. It's a reference for God. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we must have God accepted in a manner that pleases God. When I am worshiping, when I am leading praise, when I am doing offering, when I am doing counseling, when I am teaching children, is it in a manner that pleases God? Is there a respect that I'm demonstrating to God through this? 
And number three is the godly fear. Is talk about godly fear. Godly fear. Godly fear. It means a wholesome dread of displeasing God. You are dreading to displease God. That godly fear. But let me explain. We have two types of Christians. We are called Christians who are afraid of God, and we have Christians who fear God. What is the difference? When you are doing things for God, but in your heart, the intention of doing them is to prevent the consequences, then the love for God, then you are afraid of God. You are not fearing God. I'm going to give an example. You are here, you have been praying, God has given you a job. And you are working. Now you are in that job. When you come to church, you are giving because you don't want to be fired from work. As you are giving the offering and you are paying your time so that you don't have the consequences of being fired. You are afraid of God because you are more worried about the consequences than the love for God. Than the obedience to the principle of God. But when I am doing something, the motive within me is the love for God. Then I am walking in the fear of God. You understand the difference? When I know this is sin, I am not doing it because of the love for God. Then I am walking in the fear of God. But when I am afraid from doing if I do this, I might get HIV. I am afraid. I am not in the fear of God. Because I am afraid of the consequences of HIV. I'd rather stay away from it. Then I am afraid. I am not in the fear. But when I know these things, it may look appealing to the eye, but it's not in line with the God that I love. I stay away from it. My motive is because I want to walk with God in love. I stay away from it. That is the fear of God. Are you getting the difference? Mm. So as I am saying, there are Christians who are afraid of God, and there are Christians who fear God. When your concern is on the consequences, you are afraid. When your concern is about the love, because you are in love, you don't want to disappoint the person you are in love with, then you are walking in the fear of God. That's the difference. So Psalm chapter 2 verse 11, if you have the Bible, it says, serve the Lord with fear. Meaning, don't be afraid. Serve the Lord with fear. <coughs> and rejoice with trembling. Because remember, when you are afraid, you can't rejoice. Those two can't go together. But he says, serve the Lord what? with fear. And the fear here is the fear of God. Psalm chapter 2, verse 11. It's the fear for God. And it's because you are in love with Him that you stay away from Him. For what is wrong. Because you are in love with God, what He says, that's what you follow. Then God is being feared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Revival House. God is not a big brother type waiting for you to make a mistake so that He can smack you. No. God is love. His nature is love. God is a loving God. And when we bring the principle, he say, "My, the, the, these are not heavy some, are not burdensome." When you embrace what God says, your life is easy. You may be under pressure. The more you overcome maybe a temptation, you realize that wow, you are now in freedom. You have overcome this, and God's heart is touched by that, because there is the fear of God as opposed to being afraid of God. When your concern is on the consequences, I don't want to do these things will happen then. I am afraid. When I am doing because that's what the word of God says, I am walking in the fear of God. I am walking in awe of God. And God is touched by that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. By which we must have God acceptably with reverence and God with fear. If have a house, this let I let it carry out throughout the year at least. Wherever you shall be found in the next five years or ten years. The moment you are serving God, these three things, 
must be your checklist. Mm -hmm. Is it acceptable to God? Am I showing the person respect for God? And is there God with me because of the love I have for God? I am doing this. When these three things are there, God responds. When they are not there, we benefit, but it did not touch the heart of God because it was not pleasing to Him. There were no attitude of respect in that from your heart to God. There was no God with you that you are living out of the dread. We don't want to hurt. It's like you are in a relationship because you love this person. You don't want to do something that will hurt them. That's the God with you. You don't want to do this thing because you say, God says it mustn't be done. God said this is what must be done. I am doing it because of the life I have for God. Then I am walking in the fear of God. And Jesus says, John 12, verse 26, If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. The last part that touches me say, if anyone serves me, he, my father, will honor. Everyone will be delighted when God honors them. But I say, if anyone serves me, he, my father, will honor. When we are serving God, is it acceptable? Does it have show reference for God? Is it a demonstration of a godly fear out of the service? Then that service is that is God. And before I conclude, there is a verse that I want us to read. Or talk maybe here while you are opening is in Luke chapter 1. But let's explain the consuming fire. He said, We are serving God in a manner that is acceptable, in a manner that shows reverence, and in a manner that has godly fear to God. Why? Verse 29. For God is a consuming fire. Now yeah, the apostle is using and uh, picking up a reference from the Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24 where Moses by the inspiration of God is warning the people about the sin of idolatry that God will not tolerate this. The worship only belongs to God. When you get to the promised land, do not go and worship under God and Jehovah because God is a consuming fire. God is a jealous God. Now, there was to deter them, to discourage them from idolatry. Now, here is being applied to say that selfish to God cannot be anyhow, but in a manner that is being acceptable to Him, in a manner that shows reverence, and in a manner that demonstrates godly fear. When it's like that, that's a service that is acceptable to God. Are we together? Amen. The question is how is your service to God? Luke chapter 1. I don't have it on the screen. If you can read. Before we conclude quickly. Verse 5 says, There was, is a long, I will explain two or three verses for the sake of time. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. You are in verse 5. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. A certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah, his wife was of the daughters of Herod. And her name was Elizabeth. Verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. Means the fear of God, the acceptance to do things, the manner that pleases God was there. Verse 7. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. Meaning, according to the human standard, there is no way they can have a child because the years are already passed. As we say, God is not a respecter of natural laws. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 8 says, So it was while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division. He was doing what? Serving. Now they're explaining what he was doing. Verse 9. According to the custom of the priesthood, his Lord fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Priest, one of the duty of the priest, it was to burn incense at the hour of prayer. Are we together? 
So technically what we are reading here, we are still in the Old Testament because Christ is not born or crucified yet. So according to the pattern of the Old Testament, there, there, there is an altar of incense. When you go to the temple, there is the outer court, there is the inner court, which we call the holy place, and there is the holy of holies, divided by a curtain. In the holy of holy, only the high priest goes there once a year on the day of atonement to plead for the forgiveness of his sin and the sin of the people by pleading the blood. How we do it? In the holy place, priests can go there and do uh, their sacred services. One of them was to go and burn incense at the altar of incense in the holy place. When the incense are being raised, the people know outside is the hour of prayer and they are raising their prayers to God. Are we together? So it's now the, the Lord, the cast Lord now is your turn for this period to wear burn incense. That's what he's going to perform into the temple. Are we together? Verse 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Where? Where at his place of duty is doing a service to God to let the people say, I want to cry out to God in prayer. The angel appeared to him. When the angel come, angel they do not come on their own. They are coming to deliver the message that was brought or given to them by God. They are sent their message of God. But that's verse the other way. Let's see. Verse 12. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear and fear fell upon him. Verse 13. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. You can read through until 25, but I'm going to explain before we, for the sake of time. It is at a point of service. And the service, according to the ordinance, they will blame the evening. There are things we pleasing before God. God responded and attended to them at this point of service when he's burning incense. And as I said to you, in the whole Bible, there is no people who have walked with God that God ever gave them a sign. Something, as we say, that God does in your life when even your mind cannot be able to comprehend that God has done these things. And what? He came to Abraham and Sarah. They are old, but he gave them a child. Humanly, it was impossible. And throughout, now to Zechariah as well, their age is past. They are old. They cannot help. But he said, your prayer has been heard when it is a time of him serving God. There is divine visitation. And said, This is what will happen. Hence, we have John the Baptist. How it will Amen. So, the service to God, when it's pleasing to God, it attracts divine attention on you. Because there is no service you will raise for God with that is acceptable, that shows reference to God, that is with godly fear, that will not cause heaven to respond. That's why God is responding to this service. So this year, as we are crying out to God and serving God, there are things that attract God, that are studying, that attract divine attention in the Bible. You can summarize them. It's, there is a time of prayer and intercession that causes heaven to respond. There are times services to God that touches the heart of God, causes God to respond. There are times where arms are being raised, offering the giving that God cannot ignore but to respond. There are things. Now we are dealing about the service. Let our services to God be in a manner that God is pleased. In a manner that God feels respected. In a manner that demonstrates the God in fear. So that God may respond. Signs and wonders will happen through the preaching of the word and the written word of God. Through prayer, great prayer and intercession to God. Others will come as a result of genuine service to God. In a manner that is pleasing to God. In a manner that God sees that these people are in awe of me and are walking God of fear. Then he has no option to respond to you. When God comes, Anything that is not of God changes. When God comes, it cannot be limited.
by natural laws. Here here it cannot be limited. They say they are past the age, they can't bear a child. Those are natural laws. God cannot be confined in what the law says, in what the procedure says, in what the policy of the government says. God is too God to be locked in the procedure of men, in the laws of humans. Amen. Are we together? So as our services are rising before God, let it be a banner that draws divine attention and causes God to respond. We are trusting God as he has said there will be signs, there will be wonders in the year, in this decade, that will back up the genuine preaching of the word of God, the genuine prayer and intercession, and there will be those because of the service and the reference to God that draws heaven attention on you. When we are approaching the matter of God, let it be from all sides. In prayer, in service, in giving, in obedience, so that God may respond to our need, to our heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us have grace by which we may serve God with reverence and God be fear. Let that be our checklist. Your individual checklist, nobody is checking you, is a check, your personal checklist in your heart. But what I am doing here now as a service to you, does it have reverence? Does it please you? Are you sensing a hope and godly fear in it to you? Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the Lord. Jesus, just lift your right hand if you can. Father, in Jesus' name, glorify your name. What we have shared was not for jumping, for screaming. Yes, but it's for sinking in and for digestion. I am praying, Lord, even for myself. There is no way, Lord, you can allow me to stand before the people that you have bought with your own precious blood and to do things anyhow. May there be reverence in everything we do for you in the house. May they be pleasing before you, acceptable to you. May there be reverence for God. Godly fear may be part of it. And may draw heaven attention on individual lives and on this house in the name of Jesus. So I am praying for the grace of God upon every life and my life as well in the name of Jesus. Touch our lives, Lord. And never asking of glory so that our service may be pleasing to you. Maybe with showing respect to you. Maybe with godly fear. And it may be glorified in the name of Jesus. Bless each and every life here. May you grant signs. May you grant testimonies. May you pack up your people in prayer. May you pack up your people in intercession. May you pack up your people through your word. For your word is like fire, says the Lord, like a fire that breaks the rock in pieces. Any stumbling block in the lives of your people, by the application of the word of God, let the stumbling block be removed, be broken, by the power in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Anybody under witchcraft attack, we declare by divine authority, for you have given us your authority to trample on serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means help us. So we declare by divine authority, any witchcraft power, let it lose its power now in the name of Jesus. Any road that is blocked for somebody that they feel there is a mountain, may the hammer of the word of God break the mountain. Let the road to be flattened. Let the valley be lifted before God, all your people. Let the crooked way be made astray. Let the rough places be made a plain by the power in the name of Jesus. Touch the lives of your people. Move upon your people's life and glorify yourself, O King of Glory. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, hear my prayer. Respond to this prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.